No, I am very much aware that I look like I've just kind of dunked my face in makeup today, and I kind of did. Um, <laughs> but I thought, why let it go to waste? Might as well make a video while I have my full face on. If you are wondering, this is for TikTok. I'm thinking of doing a Disney princess inspired makeup series, so I've started off with one. Put your guesses down below. <laughs> and apparently I have absolutely nothing in my wardrobe that suits this makeup, so I am very much aware I look like kind of Corella de Vil esque as well, so <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with today. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. My name is Kirielle, and today I want to talk about a few things, okay? Today we're going to be roasting some time wasters, and I'm grilling YouTube for this, okay? Because I spent my money on some things that just did not live up to the hype, man. <laughs> and so I thought, why not talk about it? Why not save you guys the trouble of buying some of these things? Because some of these things are expensive and they ain't worth the money. Before we do get into it, why not subscribe? All you need to do is hit the red button down below and the bell button and that'll just notify you when I upload. And I am uploading a bit more often now because we're all in the house and I have time on my hands. Now is the best time to subscribe. <laughs> oh, and you'll also be entered into my 1000 subscriber giveaway, which is coming soon. I'm just waiting for everything to be delivered. Things are coming in a little bit slower than usual, so I'm just sitting here waiting for everything to arrive. And there's some good stuff in there. So yeah, if you want to be in a chance to win some makeup, why not subscribe? Anyway, let's get into the products that I just think were hyped up so much and they did not live up to the expectation. No shade, but all of the shade. <laughs> Alright, so I have a crate full of makeup. Let's start with base products. So here I have the Hourglass Neural Veil Primer. This just, I, this is so expensive for one. This is a really expensive product. I just feel like it doesn't do anything different to any of my other primers. The only thing about it is it has SPF in it. So that's the only good thing about it, in my opinion. But it just doesn't really do that much for my skin. It doesn't really blur my skin. It just kind of hydrates slightly, but I can get that through a moisturizer or SPF. <laughs> I don't need to spend like whatever this was like 40 pounds or something like that on a primer to get the kind of finish this gives so 100% I don't think it is worth the hype and I saw a few people talking about this mainly Jackie Ina so yeah it just didn't work for me <laughs> now the next thing don't get me wrong I use it and it feels nice on the skin and I do like it as a product the price tag is astronomical to me the hype on this thing is insane <laughs> and that's the Fasali unicorn essence I this is like 50 quid, like a ridiculous amount for this tiny thing. And it's nice, it feels nice on the skin. I don't think it does a lot for your makeup. It maybe adds like a little bit of a tacky base, but not even a crazy amount of tack. But the hype on this, guys, the hype on this, everybody uses it, mainly on Instagram. And I just don't, I just don't understand. <laughs> Again, it's a product that I use and it's fun to put on with the dropper and everything. But, oh God, actually, mine looks like it's actually gone off in the tube, which is great because I haven't reached for it in a while. <laughs> this is just so overhyped and I don't think it's worth the hype. Like it's nice but it's not that nice. I much prefer my Barry M Unicorn Primer Drops. Like these are so much better and they keep your makeup on for longer. And they're about a tenth of the price. Not even that. <laughs> Alright next up foundations. I've got three here. Uh, let's get this one out of the way. Fenty Beauty Matte Foundation. Oh so dry. So, so, so dry and I have oily skin. Okay, this is just, <laughs> I don't know, you guys remember the hype for this? I mean, I was in America when this dropped and I bought it there and then. I felt the hype for it, I gave in to the hype and I bought it and I've barely used this because it's just way too dry for my skin and it was just way overhyped. Take a shot every time I say hyped or hype in this video because it's gonna be said a lot, I imagine. Next up, the Maybelline Superstay. So many people love this foundation, so many people hyped it up and say it's one of their favorites and I absolutely detest it. <laughs> it's dry, it's thick, the shade range is stupid. <laughs> I don't have a shade that I can personally use and yeah. I really don't like this as a foundation. This is a more affordable one. People picked it up too much and it's too big for its boots, okay? <laughs> I just don't like this at all. And finally, a cult favorite, not even on YouTube, but in general in makeup artistry. This is a product that's used a lot and it's the MAC Studio Fix Foundation. For one, I can't get a shade that works for me. This is NW10 and it's too orange. Like I know it's NW, so it's got a warm undertone, but they didn't have an NC10 and this is too dark for me. The finish and everything like that is okay, but it's just one of those products that I'm like, 
there's better out there, you know? I can't get behind this one. Not worth all of the hype and all of the praise it gets, personally, I feel. I'm sorry if people love this foundation on here. This is just my personal opinion, so please don't take it to heart. <laughs> I mean, who can take me seriously while I'm wearing this face of makeup anyway, you know? I don't blame you if you look at me and think I'm a fool. I look like a clown right now. I quite, I'm quite aware. Um, <laughs> but I just don't like this foundation. Okay, okay. Concealer, need I say more? <laughs> Tarte Shape Tape. Uh, um, again, not worth the hype. There are so many other concealers out there that are so much better and for a lot cheaper. It creases on me. I don't understand the praise and, you know, all the obsession over this. And it's just meh. Another concealer that just whoa the hype. <laughs> the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. I tried this on a video, I'm pretty sure. It just made my eyes look really textured, really creasy. It was just really average. <laughs> Well, not even average because I've got affordable concealers that are from the drugstore that work better than this. This just accentuated every little lump and bump I didn't even know I had underneath my eyes. And everybody loves this. The majority of people I see online love this concealer and I just can't get behind it. Like, I don't understand. Is it me? It's probably me, but... <laughs> Well done to Makeup Revolution for having like 50 shades, you know, pat on the back for that, that's amazing, especially for the drugstore. You really set the bar for people. However, I just didn't like this concealer. The formulation just was not for me. <laughs> Face powder. What a disappointment this really was for me. <laughs> this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I heard so many good things about this from people like Jamie Genevieve, Samantha Maria, and this just, I, I think it's too finely milled for my face because my face just eats away at this powder. I barely last like half an hour when I apply this to my face. It really does not keep the oil away. I've tried setting my face with this. I've tried setting my under eyes with this. I've tried just putting it in my purse and taking it on the go with me and touching up. It just, it doesn't cake up. So I'll give it that. It is a micro powder, but it just doesn't do anything for my oils on my face. And it's so annoying when I have a powder that's not doing its job. You know? And I made quite a bit of a dent in this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. But I really tried to work with this powder and it does not live up to the high standard that everyone talks about it, in my opinion. It may be good if you've got drier skin because it's not gonna really dry out your skin, but it's not good for oily people who produce quite a bit of oil on their face. Um, so yeah, just an FYI, a lot of money, not worth it. Bronzer. This one's mainly for the shade, but it is Hoola by Benefit. I've used it quite a lot as well. I didn't realize I use it that much, but I have actually hit pan on this bronzer. Like, don't ask me how, because I don't even know. I don't even remember using it that much. <laughs> the actual product in itself is okay. Again, a lot of hype around it. There's other bronzers out there that, you know, do just as well, but whenever you would be recommended a bronzer usually, it would be Hoola by Benefit. And this is a little bit too orangey on me. I know they've now got Hoola Light, so that will probably be better for me, but I don't feel like spending that amount of money when, again, I've got more affordable bronzers that work just as well. <laughs> This is just one of those cult products, you know, where everybody pretty much knows about Hula Bronzer. And then again, it's just like, why is the hype so real for these particular products? I understand back in the day, this was kind of like the only product that was noted for being a good bronzer, but now there's so many other options out there that I just don't think it's worth the hype anymore. Again, just my opinion. If you love this bronzer, please keep loving this bronzer because it works for you. I've actually got a few highlighters as well to talk about. First off, who remembers these? <laughs> this is the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops. I bought these in 2017 and I think I've used them like twice. <laughs> I remember when everybody was talking about them and they were apparently amazing. Were they really worth everybody hyping about? I just don't think so. I mean, they're pretty. They're not that blinding. Like it looks blinding on my hand, but on my face, it doesn't look that way. And they're slightly oily, but also dry down really quickly. I just didn't really get it. Um, and I still don't quite get it. They just don't and again, I spent a lot of money on these because these are so expensive. I have other highlights that work so much better and look so much better on my skin. I just think these were a little bit of a waste of money. By the way, I do have my window open, so if you can hear chirping birds outside, 
that's why. <laughs> it is boiling in my room right now, so I cannot close the window, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna roast myself in here like I'm roasting these products, okay? <laughs> Next up is Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And it's the Skin Frost. I don't know if it's just this particular shade because this is the only shade I've got. This is the Eclipse one, the collaboration with Manny MUA. Um, <laughs> and it's a pretty color and I would like to wear it, but it's just so ridiculously chunky. I just don't understand. Like on my skin, it picks up all of my texture and it does not lay down well on my skin. But even in the pan, it feels like chunky. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. And also it kind of creates a film as I go over it. I mean, his cosmetic brands is like one of the just ultimately hyped ones ever to exist. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I do like a lot of his products. Let's not get it twisted. I do love the brand. Just this in particular really just disappointed me. I was expecting so much from these, especially because so many people love them. But yeah, it just does not sit well on my skin and not worth it in my opinion. And then there's these, both by ABH, both very expensive. So first of all, the Amrezy, I'm sure this is a lovely formula highlighter. I have tried it once on video and it was too dark for me, so I can't use it. It looks absolutely gorgeous and honestly, I would really like to use it, but I just can't. <laughs> I bought this the second time round that they launched it because I had faith. I thought it was gonna be fair enough because it was blinding on everybody else and everyone said it was good for a lot of skin tones. Well, it said for all the skin tones, I'm pretty sure it was something, but it's not. I can't use it. It's too dark for me. It is such a pretty tone and I would love to be able to use it, but it's just too dark. It's the top one there. Like when I put it on my face, it casts a shadow like that. So I don't want to look like I've got indented cheekbones. I mean, it's not the look I want to go for. <laughs> So this, again, I don't feel it's worth the hype, but this is just in my opinion. But I do think it was just overhyped in general. Like it was everywhere at one point that I could not escape it. But yeah, personally, I can't use it. So to me, it's not worth the hype. And then the loose highlighters. <laughs> I did a video with these and yes, it seemed like it worked well and it did make my skin look like glass, but I just don't have a need for like a silvery, white highlighter and it just it almost leaves a cast on my skin as well also the formula the powder is so weird it's like chunky it blends out nicely but the actual formula in itself is weirdly chunky like the powder sticks to itself and clumps to itself and it kind of fluffs a little bit when you try to put it on it's just a messy powder that's all but yeah it's very very casty and very white and silver which personally I go for more of a golden tone or a yellow tone or even a slightly pink tone but when they launched they didn't have one fair enough for me I still don't think they do so I settled for the fairest one because I really wanted to try the actual formula and test it out but yeah I gave in not that I regret my decision I just wish I'd spent my money elsewhere <laughs> all right eyeshadow palette. Juvia's place, anybody? <laughs> I mean, because of Naked Tutorials, these have got so much hype and I kind of understand, but also don't. The colors in here are okay, but I think they're just not suitable for my skin tone as a palette as a whole. If I want to use shades from this, I have to go to another palette to get more transitions and stuff. The shimmers are amazing, don't get me wrong, but the mattes just are okay. And I never find myself reaching for this palette. I just feel like the hype of this was just so over the top. People were saying Juvia's place has like the most amazing eyeshadows and the most pigmented eyeshadows like yeah but pigment isn't always everything i hate to burst the bubble but yeah this eyeshadow palette i just mm, it's all right <laughs> i have no other words to say about it okay it was just you know i've said it about a thousand times in this video already <laughs> All right, we have some glitter in this video. This is NYX Glitter Girls Liquid Eyeshadow. Um, no, it, it's not. This is a topper, not a liquid eyeshadow, and it's really streaky. It's ridiculously patchy and does not go smoothly over the lid, and you have to try layering it, but then if you do that, it flakes off. I saw a few people talking about these, Jordan Lipscomb being one of them. Disappointment. You guys know how much I love my liquid eyeshadows, and this was a pure disappointment moment and ruined my makeup that day. So as you can imagine, I was pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah, thanks YouTube for ruining my day. <laughs> I have two mascaras that I'm so glad I bought the minis of to try because if I'd bought the big size, I probably would have been so annoyed. The first one is the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. Oh my god, everyone loves this and I just, I 
can't get behind it. Like the wand looks like a wand that I'd really like. But then when I put it on, I was so disappointed. It didn't give me the volume that I liked. It just kind of coated them in black, but didn't do anything to them. So I was literally distraught. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Why is this not one of the best mascaras I've ever tried? Because everybody talks about it, but it just ain't working for me. <laughs> and that's just what happened. It just did not work for me at all. So this mascara, it's just a no from me. Oh, and who can forget the most hyped up <laughs> mascara that was like in 2018 or 2017, I can't quite remember. And it is the Bad Gal Bang. Do you remember all the astronaut shit that they were talking about with <laughs> this mascara and all the crazy brand trips that everybody was complaining about? Um, <laughs> this just, I mean, uh, again, it was okay. But my other mascaras that are from the drugstore that costs eight pounds do a better job than this. This was one of the most hyped up products I think I'd ever seen. There was like a countdown and everything. And every single influencer that I follow was talking about it. And I was just like, okay, we get it. There's a new mascara coming out. So yeah, this one, just so overhyped for the actual product in itself, which I get they were proud. Okay, they were proud, but I mean, they were so loud about it. <laughs> we're coming to the end now about lip products. The first one being this by Fenty Beauty, a lip paint or whatever it is. This is in the shade Unbutton. It's a pretty nude color. It's a very nice nude color. And I love the packaging and everything like that. However, <laughs> the formula of this is so liquidy with such high pigment, it seems like a good idea. And it is for people with perfect lips. But for people who have slight creasing in the corners, have a lot of lines on their lips, who have any kind of, maybe even scar, around the lips. This will bleed into those. <laughs> I have these kind of creases on the sides of my lip, right in the corner, every single time, without fail. This will go into those creases and I'll look like I've made a mess before I've even finished putting my lipstick on. I've tried so many times, it's just so frustrating because I love the color. I have been able to wear this like once or twice, whereby I filled the majority of my lip in with lip liner and just kind of put it in the center and like dabbed it out with my finger. But it's so frustrating because it's not a careless product. Like I feel like I have to be really careful when applying this, which is not something I usually am with my lipstick. I probably should be but I'm not. If it even was just, just a little bit thicker, it would be so much easier for me to use, but because it is so watery, it just gets everywhere. So this is something that is just overhyped for me. Oh, and this, I didn't even buy this, but I got a sample. Again, so overrated. <laughs> the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, I've got the shade Pillow Talk, last like 0.1 minutes on the lips. I don't understand the hype, like they're comfortable, but they just barely stay on. They just fade away so quickly. I don't understand why everybody loves it. <laughs> the formula is light, I get it, it's comfortable, it doesn't go into the creases and stuff, but it's so expensive for something that barely lasts on the lips so you're gonna have to reapply all the time and you're going through the product so quickly and it's so expensive. I don't understand the hype on this. <laughs> like is everybody asleep? I'm confused. <laughs> Do they just like not talk and not rub their lips together throughout the day? Am I wearing this wrong? It just does not last on my lips at all. Not worth the hype. And then finally the last product is by Dominique Cosmetics and it's their gloss. I picked up the shade Lemonade and Again, this is just like an average product and I've heard a lot of people say that they really like it It's just a thick gloopy gloss. <laughs> it's a pretty color like a very pretty color But the actual formula for me it's a no-go. I prefer my glosses not sticky at all. I feel it a lot on my lips It's a very heavy gloss. I really liked it because of the packaging But then I bought a gloss from MUA which was like what two three pounds <laughs> And this is so much better because it doesn't have that sticky or tacky or heaviness. It's not as pigmented. With a gloss, I just, I don't want it to be pigmented. I'm usually putting it over top of something. I don't want to be able to feel it. It feels really heavy and sticky, whereas the MUA one is just light and serum-like even. I would not waste your money on this. Again, overhyped. Um, get the MUA one instead. <laughs> All right, well, there are some of the products that I just don't feel like lived up to expectations and that I feel like people really tried selling you on and really tried to make them feel like they're life-changing products when really they were just average. <laughs> this is just a light-hearted video. These are all just my opinions. I'm not attacking the brands because, again, there are a lot of things that are like from these brands. These are products that I just feel like were so hyped up and just did not 
work for me and they just didn't live up to their hype, okay? <laughs> if you enjoy these products, then great to keep using them. And there's probably products that I love that you don't think were worth the hype. It's completely normal to like different things. But yeah, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. What's a product that you thought was overhyped? Leave it in the comments down below. If you're new, feel free to subscribe. All you need to do is hit the red button down below and the bell and that'll just notify you when I upload next. I'm not afraid to speak the truth. Well, my truth. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna love you and leave you. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I hope to see you on the next one. Till then. Bye guys. Hey.